Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about bonds and accounting for bonds. Before we, before I start, I'm talking a little bit about, um, you know, how we account for bonds. Let's start by, by, by describing how the, um, the bond dis, the bond discount or premiums come about, because that's an important part of um, bond accounting. You're going to have to learn how to, how to account when there's a discount or a or a premium on a bond okay and what is it and why is it included in in, in certain categories okay okay why is it included in the interest expense component which is where we include it okay so let me just start by giving a brief uh, definition of what a bond is and um for more details you you should go to the book and you sh or should go to the powerpoint slides and study those um mostly in the videos i work on, on problems and and accounting but for for uh theoretical stuff and wordings and things like that you should go to the book okay um but a bond is a is a um is a form of funding for a company and it's a loan basically is what it is so Companies have two major forms of funding, of obtaining funds. The first big one is um, through through equity, right? Common shares. And in that case, they're selling um, a piece of the company. Uh, the second big one is through loans. Um, and in that case, they're not selling a piece of a company. They're simply um, getting a loan out from, the, um, from whoever it is. Now, companies can get loans out from banks or they can issue bonds and sell them out to the general public okay or to other corporations so let's take a look at that um, so that's basically what a bond is um, a company will create a bond indenture which is a, a certificate bond certificate or bond indenture which is uh, which states um, certain um, certain conditions certain features of the bond that they're going to sell like the principal amount and the the coupon rate that they're going to pay and so forth and so on and then um the market will bid for that bond and pay a price right so let me just go through here and explain um one by one so what's the face value of the bond face each individual bonds are usually um about one thousand dollars in face value each individual one in this case i'm using a an example of seven hundred thousand so let's just pretend that we're this company issue seven hundred one thousand dollar face value bonds okay so that's the bond that's that's the dollar amount on the face of the bond right so theoretically speaking you sell a bond for let me try to use the seven hundred thousand dollar example here however remember each individual bond is about it tends to be one thousand dollars in face value so this company issued um seven hundred thousand dollars total in bonds at face value seven hundred thousand dollars so if everything is perfectly aligned the, the company receives seven hundred thousand dollars back they pay every either every semi-annually monthly or annually whatever is stated in the in the bond indenture a rate on that seven hundred thousand dollars which what's the rate that they're going to pay well they're going to pay in this case in this example twelve percent so this is also stated in the bond indenture or bond certificate notice how i put bond certificate here and i put bond indenture up here uh, the book states says bond indenture that's probably that's probably the correct terminology so let me just go ahead and change this all i'll leave one as well I'll, I'll put them all as bond indenture okay so that's the more that's the more technical techn uh, technical terminology so the 12 percent which is known as the coupon rate or contract rate another name is stated rate so the stated rate the coupon rate or the contract rate is 12 percent so the company and let's say this this um well this one is two times per year right so how much would they pay in cash they would pay seven hundred thousand times since 
it's 12 percent this is always stated annually but since it pays two times per year so that every half year they're going to pay six percent right 0 0.06 and then that should equal 42,000 so what that's what they pay cash out every month on the coupon or contract rate and two times per year it's for three years this is this is the the, the amount of payment semi-annually so that means that they pay two times per year that's also in the bond indenture and it's for three years so this bond matures in three years at the end of three years you must return um seven hundred thousand dollars back to the um to the lender okay and um and whatever interest uh, for that period okay and so so um so that's a basic concept all these are stated in the bond indentures the first four the first the first four and so that's it and it sounds pretty easy but this is the rate that the company is going to pay in on their bonds right we already said that and that's stated in the bond indenture and that's not going to change so what happens if bonds of equal maturity three years and of equal credit standing in other words equal risk um are paying 14 percent in the so this is known as the market rate or effective rate if you're an investor and you have a choice between two bonds that are equally risky they have equal credit ratings one pays 12 percent and one pays four percent which one are you going to buy obviously you're going to buy the one that pays 14 percent because you want the one that pays higher rate right so this is the market rate so if bonds out in the market are are um are give are paying 14 percent interest well then this bond will not sell at face value nobody's going to want to pay seven hundred thousand dollars for this bond so the investor says well since this bond pays only 12 percent i am willing to purchase your bond but i'm not going to pay you seven hundred thousand dollars you will return seven hundred thousand dollars at maturity but i'm only going to pay you six hundred sixty six thousand six hundred and thirty four dollars up front and at the end you pay me seven hundred thousand dollars notice how there's a difference between what you pay at the end what you return to the investor and what you get up front what is that difference well in this case the difference is thirty three three sixty six this is to compensate the investor for the lower coupon rates so in in effect what should this be considered well this is considered part of the interest right it's considered part of the interest because it's it's an adjustment done to the price of the bond due to certain interest rates due to the fact that the that the bond has a lower interest rate than the market does so notice how when a bond pays a lower interest rate than the market it will trade at a discount what does that mean it will sell at a price that's lower than its face value okay and so this 33,366 will be included as as part of interest expense remember in accounting we use the matching concept so we're not going to wait till the difference is paid till the maturity which is when the difference in outflow occurs right you receive 666634 at the end of th three years the corporation pays 700,000 there's a difference of 33,366 in effect the company is giving them 33,366 in interest at the end but we're not going to wait at the end to account for this we're going to go ahead and put a small portion of this into each of the six payments as part of the interest right and that's called amortizing the discount and we'll see examples of that now in our books in this book because this is a principles of accounting book we will learn how to do this using the straight line method however gap um, requires you for for you to do the effective interest method which is a little more complicated ultimately you're just going to amortize the whole thing the whole 33 366 but luckily for you at least in this course you're not going to have to learn that you'll, you'll only learn the straight line method which is permitted when 
when the um, when the interest on a bond is is not material enough then then gap and the FASB permits you to use the straight line method and so we'll learn the straight line method in this course okay the easier of the two instead of the effective interest method so as you can see this bond sells at a discount if you have a face value of 700,000 and the coupon or contract rate is 12% and the market or effective rate is 12%, then the, the rates are the same. There's absolutely no need to adjust the par value of the bond. You receive 700,000 as a corporation, you pay out 700,000 at the end of three years, and that's called trading at par. So there will be no discount or premium, and there will be no need to include this portion in your accounting as as part of your accounting entries okay so here's another example what happens when when the, uh, uh, the bond pays a coupon rate of 12 percent and the market rate is 10 percent well every investor is going to want this bond right because it trades at 12 percent and the market pays only 10 percent but the company isn't dumb right the company knows well we're paying 12 percent and the rest of the and the rest of the market is paying 10 percent this happens due to timing differences. You know, maybe the maybe the rate was twelve percent when the market when the company started to print the, the bond indentures and, and then it dropped suddenly. But at this point they can't change the stated rate. What they'll do is they'll change the price. Um in any case, either the company will refuse to sell at seven hundred thousand and demand a premium, or simply the market will increase, will bid it up. Um, to 735 530 um, because investors will compete each other for this bond which pays a higher interest rate than the 10% market rate okay and that's how premiums and discounts come about keep in mind that a discount occurs when the coupon rate of the bond or the contract rate is lower than the market or effective rate and a premium occurs when the coupon or contract rate or stated rate is higher than the market or effective rate okay and in this case the selling price will be lower in the discount the selling price will be lower than the face value and in the premium the selling price is higher than the face value when the coupon rate or contract rate matches the market or effective rate then the face value and the selling price will be the same okay let me just go through a little bit of, of, of um, how this number comes about so that you could understand it we're not going to test on that but please don't skip it because this part is interesting to understand so how how do we determine that price right i created an excel file here um that hopefully will will um will help clear this up a little bit right so every asset is worth the present value of their future cash flows right and and so if you look at an example of this bond let's start with the first example i think i had this this could this adjust automatically right so let's say that the coupon rate is 12 percent the coupon rate is 12 percent and the market rate is 14 percent okay and hopefully that adjusted automatically okay so we know that this bond is going to have cash outflows to the investor of 42,000 42,000 42,000 42,000 42,000 42,000 that's the that would be equal to the coupon rate divided by 2 which is known as the periodic rate times 700,000 and at the end of 3 years you're going to give them their last 42,000 their last interest payment plus their principal back right so these are all the cash flows that they receive so you're going to discount that at the current market rate to bring it down to present value so if the market rate is 14 percent it's going to discount it much more right if the market rate is 10 percent it's lower it's going to discount it less and notice how the price the value of the stock changes right so we have 14 here so this is this here when you discount all these cash flows you determine the price of the bond notice how when the market rate is 14 percent this becomes six 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 thirty four which matches the example that i gave here and when this is uh ten percent it becomes 735 530 because you're discounting this doesn't change right the cash flows will will be the same 
you always pay 42000 because all this is in the bond indenture. And you will always return 700000 because that's the face value. But the present value, what, what is this worth to an investor changes? This is what changes here, the discount rate. And in this case, a lower discount rate will create a higher ending value, a higher value uh, today, present value. So it will be 735530 so if I make these match at 12%, um, this should come up to 700,000 because it will trade at par. So it does, it comes up to 700,000. So each of these cash flows discounted at the appropriate, at the 12% rate. In this, in this case, it would be at a 6% rate because we're doing it every six months. So the periodic rate is 6%. Um, will be 700,000 and th that's how um, discounts premiums and, and and par values are determined and this is how we determine the value of a bond for the test and for this course you do not have to do this you don't have to learn it you will have to learn it in future in a higher level accounting course but for this course and for this test we will always give you the face value of the bond and the selling price. So we'll tell you, I'll tell you in a t if I give you a test, the face value was 200,000 and it sold for 190,000. Well, you know, it sold for a discount, right? $10,000 discount. If I say the face value was 200,000 and the selling price was um, 210,000, well, you know that it sold in a premium. If it's sold at a premium, what must be this case? Well, it must be the case that the coupon rate of that bond or the contract rate was higher than the market rate, right? And if it's sold at a discount, it must be the case that the coupon rate or contract rate was lower than the market rate. And if it's sold at par, it must be the case that the coupon rate or market rate matches the um, matches the um, the mar uh, the coupon rate or contract rate matches the market rate okay so this is a concept for you to know um, you're not going to be asked and you're not going to be tested on, on on determining present value and selling prices of bonds but I just wanted you to understand how the prices of these bonds came about it's not really uh, you know and it's not like somebody sits down on a computer well somebody may sit down on, on a computer and actually calculate this but at the end of the day, it's the bids by the investor that's going to bring it to that level. But the investor is only going to bid based on this type of uh, analysis. That's what they're going to bid based on, okay? So let's take a look at the accounting now for bond amortization. Remember, this is bond amortization using the straight line depreciation. This is what we call a bond amortization schedule, okay? Okay. It's not part of the balance sheet. It's it's not part of um, what you present to the um, to the general public. Um, it may be in the disclosure notes. I'm not sure, at, or at least a lot of the information here is found in the disclosure notes. But the schedule in in and of itself, you won't find it on the balance sheet, right? This is just information. Um, if anything, you at most you might find it in the disclosure notes. Okay. So anyways, we have an example here of a, of a discount, a bond that sells at a discount. So here's the information. Here's the um, amortization schedule. Over here, I have all the journalized entries. And over here, I have the GLs as they occur. Okay. So in order, the best thing to do as an accountant is to create your amortization schedule. Because this is going to tell you the entries that you're going to do. Okay. So using the same logic that I showed you in this tab you are well you don't have to use this logic because you're the seller so you're simply going to use the selling pr the the price that you sold it at right um you let the buyer worry about this i guess i guess the buyer is the one that's going to worry about calculating all this stuff to see how much they're going to bid um, but whatever you sold it at in this case more than likely you're going to sell it at a discount right because the coupon rate is lower than the market rate now if you could find you know a foolish investor that gives you seven hundred thousand for for this bond then you then as a seller of a bond you're going to take it you don't care you're not going to tell them hey our coupon rate is lower than the market rate our bond really sells at six 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 thirty four no you're not going to say that but you know the markets are very efficient and 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 the market will 
it, they're not going to let this happen. The market will bid it down to this price. Okay, 666-634 is what this bond would trade here. A 12% bond, 14% market rate. It pays semi-annually, so it has six um, periods. As you can see, we have six periods here. Every six months, I do a line. And the periodic rate that I'm going to use to discount is 14%. Now, this information is needed to come up with these calculations, right? So you get your 666-634 here. That's the money that came in. And now you're going to start paying. Notice how you're going, how the outstanding balance is going to move up to 700000 That's the par value or the face value of the bond, right? That's what we call the carrying amount or the net book value. Okay, so on 630, you will make a cash payment of 42000 If you're When I say you, I'm talking, I'm, I'm talking from the issuer's perspective. So if I issue a bond and I receive cash, I need to make the payments to the investor. So um, you, the, the, the bond issuer will pay $42,000 in cash, right? How do I get that $42,000 in cash? 700000 times 6% because this is my periodic rate. And I should have put periodic rate here, but I didn't. Uh, let's see if I could, uh, let's see if I could do this. This is the periodic rate and the, the periodic coupon rate will be 6%. This is the periodic market rate. So if I go 700,000 times 6%, let's do that. Let's do it down here just so that you can see. 700,000 times 6% is 42,000, right? So that's what we're paying every six months because this is not going to change, okay? This is in the bond and it'll never change. So you're going to pay 42000 for three years, six times because you pay twice a year. 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, and 42. Okay. Now you're going to receive 666. You're going to pay 700000 out to the investor. So there's a total of 33366 of extra cash that you're going to pay at the end. We're not going to wait till the end to recognize that as interest expense. We're going to put a portion of that 33366 and we're going to include it with the $42,000 cash. So that's the actual money that goes out that period. But we're going to we're going to allocate a, a small portion of the of the uh, interest that goes out at the end to these periods and we're going to do it on a straight line basis. So this is very simple. Since there's a total of six periods, you're going to take 33,366, and this is going to be your monthly amortization premium. This is what you're going to add to your interest expense every month. Okay, so by the time the, the bond matures, you've amortized the full 33,366. So you take this and you add it to this, and this is your total interest rate, uh, interest expense, or effective interest, right? So once you've paid this effective interest, you come over here and you will add the um, you'll add the portion of the amortization premium to that'll create your new balance, right? Remember this is outstanding balance or carrying amount. Remember, this doesn't lower your outstanding balance. You're just paying monthly interest. You're not paying any portion of principal here. This is strictly interest. So there's no principal pay down. So don't expect this to go down at, at all. This is going to go down because you are going, this is going to go up because you are going to amortize a portion of your premium. And you'll see that when I do the GLs, what we're trying to accomplish here. Okay, so this will give you a, this information here is going to give you a line on the GL, which you'll see in a second, a, a journalizing entry. This will give you a journalizing entry here, and you're going to see it here as I do it. And all this, all this is going to give you um, entries. Once you have this done, these entries are pretty much easy to do, okay? And so as you can see here, a bond that trades at a discount, will start the carrying amount will start going up 
up till it reaches its face value. And if it trades at a premium, the carrying amount will go down until it reaches its, um, its face value. Okay, so let's continue with the discount example. So let's start doing entries. Once you, under, once you create this um, amortization schedule, now you can do entries, right? So your first entry, you sold the bond. How much did you receive in, in cash? Well, we already stated that the cash received was 66634, right? As I do these here, I've linked them so you can see what occurs over here at the GL. So cash of 666634 came in, which is um which is very good, okay? So now you got your money with you. Um you must recognize the um discount here. So what's the total discount we gave um, this company? Thirty-three thousand three sixty-six, and that's going to go to be part of the interest paid. Why is it part of the interest paid? Well, when you return, what's the bonds payable? The bonds payable is the face amount. So when you return the bonds, you're gonna you're not gonna return six 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 thirty-four. You're gonna return seven hundred thousand. Well, that difference is interest. Um, it may not be paid out on a month on a, on a semi-annual basis but it's pay out, paid out at the end when you when you pay out the difference right so you must um, book it and eventually include it in interest expense every period notice how now in RGLs I have a bonds payable of 700,000 discount on bonds payable of 33,366 33, which I booked here so the net book value of the bond is going to be 666634 and that's what's known as the carrying amount. This is a contra account to the bond's payable account. So it's a contra so when it's presented more than likely this is the amount that's presented not these two separate amounts. It's presented together but GLs are done separately okay. So it's a contra account. It, so we'll see. So slowly but surely, we're going to amortize this at, until it reaches zero, and we're going to have it flow into interest expense. So let's see how that occurs. So the first payment on 6-30-2013 is going to be, um, you're going to pay 42000 cash. So cash comes out, right? Now you've paid 42000 in cash. That comes out. You're going to amortize one of your um uh one six of your am amortization five thousand five sixty one because you want to recognize that as part of your interest expense right and so your total interest expense is going to be equal to forty seven thousand five sixty one okay so your interest expense is forty seven thousand five sixty one because you have the what you intended to be the normal interest expense, which was forty-two thousand, which is seven hundred thousand times six percent. But because the bond sold at a discount, you must add that whatever you discounted, at least a portion of it, into each period. In this case, it's five thousand five sixty-one, amortized on a straight line basis, and so so the total interest expense you recognize is forty-seven thousand five sixty-one. Notice how the discount now we're now we're amortizing it. Now we're going to bring it down to uh, until it reaches zero. Look at the balance on the bond discounts payable twenty seven thousand eight oh five. Look at the net book value or carrying amount six seventy two one ninety five. You see how that matches the amortization schedule. So everything appears to be fine. So the next steps are all going to be very similar. Here we have the cash payment for the second period. We take it from the second period, 1231.13. Uh, we're going to do the exact same entry here. 5561 is amortization on, on bond discount and interest expense is 47,561. Again, now the new balance on the discount is going to be 22,244. Um, the carrying amount of that bond is seven hundred thousand minus this amount six seventy seven seven fifty six and it matches my schedule here very easy right and you see how the cash outflow goes here and how you recognize the interest expense here in this GL now this interest expense is part of the um, 
of of the income statement so it, and, and so in this case interest expense for the full year is 95,122 but of course let's remember that this will close out and you start new again right so even though i'm going to show the balance increasing just like any no normal accounting you will close it out on an annual basis okay so again at 634 2014 42,000 is in cash is paid um, again we're going to amortize the discount um, 5561 and so the total interest expense is 47 and what line was I using it's all the same but I would rather use the proper line so this is um, 630 14 so all these should be on line D see I think I made a mistake on this one no 630 I, I mean on line on line 14 14 14 this should be line 13 yes line 13 um, okay Excel is a, is a really good tool if you don't know Excel you should um, learn it especially for an accountant we use it and, and an analyst we use Excel a lot 1231 14 cash is 42,000 amortization is going to be same thing 5561 And then we have um, 47,561 here is my total interest expense. And that's for 1231.14. Okay. And then we do the same thing at 630. So these are all repeated, right? Because you're, you're just simply going to do the same thing every six months. Pay coupon, pay coupon interest, right? <coughs> okay. So five five six one on six thirty fifteen and forty seven five sixty one and then my last interest payment is going to be um on twelve thirty one fifteen which is the year of maturity forty two thousand uh five five six one is my amortization of, of the discount and my total interest expense is 47,561. So what you notice is throughout the whole accounting period, we have already accounted for that 33,366 difference between cash inflow and cash outflow as part of our interest expense. We have um, divided it up equally into six parts and we have booked it at, in, as interest expense here as we start off with the difference here but we amortize it this is the amortization schedule so amortization of that of that um that discount right so what happens on the account discount on bonds payable well slowly but surely we amortize it what's going to happen with the balance it's going to be zero so we don't have an, a balance here anymore which is exactly why we want it why because the carrying amount of the bond was we got 700 that we we're gonna pay seven hundred thousand so now we have a, a net book value of seven hundred thousand which we can pay that's important else we're not gonna be able to balance right so as you can see as we made these entries this this net book value or carrying amount of the bond kept kept um, increasing increasing until it finishes at seven hundred thousand we've recognized all the interest expense and we've recognized the cash inflow and cash outflow now the last cash outflow is the return of the bond it's going to be at the same date as this last interest payment on 12 31 15 right so you're going to pay off the bond which is going to be uh, bonds payable is going to be um, 700,000 here and you are going to pay cash notice how you pay off the bond here and it closes the bonds payable down to zero now it's at zero now you're now you don't you don't owe anything and you pay out your cash of seven hundred thousand okay and that goes there and so you received a total of six 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 thirty four 
and you paid out a total of 285,366. That's the total difference in cash inflow and cash outflow, um, which matches the total effective interest that you booked, right? So now your, your interest expense matches the cash outflow, the total, on a total basis, not on a periodic basis, because remember in, in this accounting, we use accrual accounting, which, um, which changes, you know, where we, where we, the difference, be, the, there's not the same, the cash flow and the actual accounting of, of expenses are not going to match um, due to the matching principle, okay? But at the end, um, it is a correct representation. As you can see, we sent out 285366 more in cash, and that's what we recognize as total interest expense, okay? So these, this is how you account for a discount on a bond when it, on a bond when it's traded at a discount. Let's take a, a quick look at a, at a premium. This one I'm going to do a little easier because I'm just going to do it annually. So we only have three periods, okay? Um, this bond has a coupon rate of 14% and a market rate of 12%. So if it sells at 14%, then the investors are going to bid the price up. So indeed, the investors did bid the price up to 733.626. So we're going to receive 733.626 of cash coming in. Now we're going to book this as a premium on bonds payable. So what's the premium here? Notice on this schedule I have it as negative, but you're not going to put it as negative there. So let me just put a negative sign here so that it could change. So the premium is going to be 33626. Okay. And my bonds payable is going to be the same, 700,000. Okay, notice the entries here. 700,000 bonds payable. The premium is 33626. So now it increases the net book value or the carrying amount of the bonds payable. Okay, we receive 733626 in cash. So we're going to do the same thing over here. Cash payments are going to be 700,000 times 14% is going to be 98,000 every year. You're going to amortize the premium. So now you're going to put the amortization of the premium goes on this side. Okay. And so interest expense now is going to be the opposite. Now interest expense is going to be lower, right? Because you're not really paying 14%. You're, you're really paying less because, because you received 33626 more than you're going to pay. So you can you, you will use that 33626 extra as a reduction in your effective interest rate and you, and that's how you account for it. Notice now how the premium goes down and so the net carrying value goes down and as you can see here it's going to go down to 700,000. Just in the discount it goes up to 700,000 in the premium it goes down to 700,000 so it'll either go up or down to the face value of the bond depending on whether it's a discount or a premium okay so here we have um so these entries are going to be repetitive right as you know this is year 2013 this is year 2014 Okay, and this is year 2015. Very simple. So all this information, once you know how to do the, the, the amortization schedule, it'll give you all the information that you need. I'm sorry, wrong line is this one, okay. So this is line, what line is this? Line 14. I put this on the wrong line. That goes there. Line 14 and line 14. 13, 13, 13, 12, 12, and 12. Okay. So as you can see, so now we have a net book value of 700,000 outstanding, which is exactly what we wanted because that's what we're going to pay the investors back at the end, right? The premium on the bond has been fully amortized. We have a balance of zero and we've recognized all our interest expense because we've gone down to the point of maturity. So now it's a matter of returning the principal. 
so when you return the principal you're going to return cash of of seven hundred thousand your cash goes down right and you will close your bonds payable you no longer have that liability so now your bonds payable goes down to zero you don't have that liability anymore no more liability for you you've recognized all the interest expense and as you can see you received uh, you paid out two hundred sixty dollars two hundred and sixty thousand three seventy five three seventy four more cash than you received right um according to the interest rate you should have paid two ninety four more cash but because you sold it at a premium um so there there there's a reduction in cash that you have to pay and so it turns out to be two sixty three seventy four because the premium you you get thirty three thousand six twenty six more than you initially expected due to the bond selling at a premium. So this is all um, as far as accounting for bonds. There's a lot more concepts for you to learn. Um, so, you know, don't just depend on these videos. It, these videos will capture a good percentage of what's going to be on the test, maybe as much as 50%, um, depending on, on, um, on the chapters. Um, but you do have to go to the book and you do have to read a little bit more or go to the PowerPoint slides and, and read more and understand more of the concepts, okay? So hope this was helpful. Thanks.